Welcome, everybody, to No Sleep Live Stream number seven. It is a, uh, a great afternoon to be with you, and uh, thank you for your patience. And uh, we're going to kick off a great story for you this evening. We have, you could almost call this a reunion of sorts, and we'll explain that as we go along. And so the first person I want to introduce is a gentleman who um, is joining us in spirit, even though he is actually here in person. We are, are glad that he's joining us from Cincinnati, Ohio. The maestro, Brandon Boone. Come on in, Brandon. Listen hey, to everyone. That music. Listen to that music playing so wonderfully. <laughs> he's, he's not even touching his keys. Isn't that wild? It's magic. It is magic. Yes, we've... Uh, this is... The music you're hearing in the background is Brandon, but um, due to some technical limitations, he's not actually playing it. <laughs> but I'm here. I'm going to be here, you know, supporting the team from the bench. Exactly. So that's wonderful. Now, maybe you guys can tell, uh, give us an indication. How's the music? Can you hear the music? You can hear the voices over the music and all that kind of stuff. We'll wait 30 seconds for the delay to get, catch up to their answers. But you can let us know in the comments if, uh, if the delay is, is an issue. Or sorry, not the delay, if the sound is balanced. On my delay. end, I think the music might just be a hair loud. And I know that coming from me sounds ridiculous, but yeah, because you got a lot of hair. You just got to go right through it. Uh, we're getting some sounds good. Marcus Demanda says, "Hear everything perfectly." You can hear the music. Dip it, dip it sounds great. Everything sounds great. Good. Okay, well, that's good cool. news. All right, who uh, can we bring on next? A gentleman who's been on a number of our live streams, joining us all the way from Ripon, England. Mr. David Oates. David, welcome. Good evening. How are we doing? There is Mr. Alt. Wonderful. Yep, with his mug of tea. There we go. The mug O T. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excellent. How are you doing, David? Yes, very well, thank you. Uh, it's uh, been a lovely day here today. Um, nice and warm, sunny, 21 degrees, which is the mid 70s for the foreign folks. And tomorrow it's going to be 8 degrees. So it's going to be nice and chilly. Mm -hmm. And we Brits love to talk about the weather. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Wonderful. Now, who is next? Another, uh, another uh, veteran of our live streams, been on a number of shows herself, including the very first one. We welcome back from Rochester, New York, Nicole. Good night. Welcome. Hi. Hi. There she is with the cat curtains. The cat curtains. <laughs> Oh, there's someone on the chat who says that they're from Ripon. What? Doesn't, what? Doesn't, doesn't say Ripon, England. Just goes by the name River. But uh, okay. I don't know. Ripon, Kentucky. Yeah, it could be Ripon, <laughs> Colorado. There's a Wisconsin and there's a California. There's also a Ripon with a double P, West Virginia. You would know that. Many around. I would know that. It's true, yes. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, Nicole? I'm doing great. Excellent, excellent. Uh, we are proud to welcome uh, to her second live stream, I believe, the famous, all the way from South Dakota, the one and the only, Jessica McAvoy. Welcome, Jessica. I think that's the first time anyone said famous in South Dakota in the same <laughs> sentence. <laughs> How are you, Jessica? Good, David. How are you? Doing well, doing well, staying safe, as I hope we all are. Trying to stay warm. It's cold here, not like England. <laughs> Very chilly here. Sunny England, as we all know it. <laughs> Absolutely. And speaking of England, this is a first for us. Uh, we have joining us at the start of the call, and she'll come back at the end. We have the author of today's story. She wrote this script for us. Would you welcome from Brighton? No, just kidding. From Bristol, England, <laughs> Gemma Amour. Welcome, Gemma. Hello. There's Gemma. <laughs> Excellent. How are you, Gemma? I'm okay. How are you? Very well. You're enjoying me. Is it hot down in southern England today? It's super hot. I've been sunbathing in my garden. It's been glorious today. Ooh. Boy, it's got to be warm if you're going to be nude sunbathing like that. And, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all the way, all the way over in uh, in England. Yes. Wonderful. Well, Gemma. Uh, while you're on screen, I should uh, let our folks, our, friend, our friends and families and folks and fans know that uh, today's script was written by Gemma, especially for us. 
way back in October of 2018. These oh, were the wow. Days. If you, you know, a lot of you are too young to remember those days when we could actually <laughs> gather in public places and, uh, <laughs> and attend events. And we did a, two special Halloween shows in Toronto at a place oh. called Gin Mill. Gin Mill. <sighs> so good. <sighs> And we did two nights in a row in this, uh, Gin Mill is sort of a gastro pub in downtown Toronto. And they have an upper room that seats about 50 people. And we crammed about 65 people <laughs> into <laughs> that room. There, didn't we? Both nights. <laughs> and it was such an amazing night. We did a number of great scripts. We had a lot of friends and fans joining us. They made special cocktails for us. Mm. Of course, none of us imbibed in any of those. But Not at all. Not at all. It was the thought that counts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And so, uh, and so, yeah, we were able to do this story by Gemma as one of our stories. And so we thought, let's do it for our live stream. And that's what we're going to do. Uh, so apparently, Gemma, apparently uh, River is actually in Ripon, UK. So hello, River. Ah, so, excellent. Yeah. A river that's pretty good. And because and, I'm actually looking at the chat and it looks like I'm in front of a, a window in the dark, but this is in fact my wardrobe. So um, there are actually clothes underneath all of here. Weird that you got windows in your wardrobe, but well, exactly, you know. Yeah. Looking and, out and, into the dark pit of hell. And somewhere else in the room is a lion and a witch. Just to be <laughs> David's the well. witch, come on. <laughs> or is he the lion? David's uh, the witch, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So, Gemma, maybe you can introduce the story. What, what, uh, what? How would you synopsize? It's not a word. This, this story for our fans. What can uh, we It's. Uh, it takes place on Halloween. Um, in a creepy abandoned warehouse, as all Halloween stories should, and it's about two twin sisters, who are about to, shall we say be invited to partake of a game and I won't spoil any more of it for you um, but I yeah I've heard recording of this from when you went to the gin mill which I wasn't really invited to I'm very sad about that and um, it sounded amazing so I'm really looking forward to seeing it performed again wonderful 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 all righty well I think it's time for us to kick off the show uh, thank you for that Gemma we will uh, we'll invite you back after the show. I'll be and, back. Uh, <laughs> wonderful. So let's, uh, let's start this one off. And uh, as Gemma said, we are going to be entering a dark warehouse. And so welcome as we perform for you a story entitled, What Daddy Wanted. Hello? Hello? Huh. There's no one here yet. Are you sure this is the right place? I'm pretty sure that's what the guy said. I wrote it down and everything. <laughs> well, that makes a change. I'm usually the organized one. Well, this is important. Is it? What are we doing here anyways? The lawyer said to meet here at 8 o'clock in the evening on Halloween. So, now we're here. Well, I don't mean to pee on your parade, but it's dark and spooky, and this place is freezing. And I'm, I'm pretty sure I saw a huge-ass rat running around back there near the entrance. And you know what? I bet they have rabies, too, a place like this. I, I bet you could just get rabies just standing here. Stop moaning, Carrie. The lawyer mm -hmm. executing Daddy's estate set this up, not me. Now, there should be a light switch or something around here. Wait a minute. Can't he just communicate over the phone like normal people or in a letter? Apparently not. <sighs> he is Daddy's lawyer, after all. You know what Daddy was like. He liked ceremony and making a fuss about things. Yeah, and sick practical jokes. Aha! Bingo! <laughs> mm. Oh, God. This place is even worse with the lights on. <sighs> I always kind of liked Daddy's jokes. I can't believe he's been dead for 10 days already. 
can't believe he's messing around with us 10 days after his death already. There's obviously no one else here, Cleo. We might as well go home, please. Wait, what's that over there? Oh, it <laughs> looks like a table and chairs are, are they for us? There's something on the table. Let's go take a look. Carrie, I really just want to go home. It's Halloween. Lizzie's having a party. I have a costume all ready to go, please. It'll only take a moment. Come on. Ugh. Hmm. Three chairs, a pen, and an old metal lockbox. God, look at the size of it. <laughs> this thing hasn't been opened in years. Do you think the... that Daddy's will is in sight? Yep, this whole setup just reeks of daddy. Hello there, you must be Cleo and Carrie. Oh god, that made me jump. Where did you come from? Are you the lawyer? You're late. We're cold, we're tired, and I'm sick of this place already. Isn't there another way we could have done this? And it's a pleasure to meet you too, young lady. And I am indeed the executor of your father's will. I must apologize for calling you out here like this. I usually don't read the last will and testament out in person in this manner, but your father specifically requested we do it like this, at this time, on this date, and in this exact location. It was a written condition of the will, in fact. So, you see, I had no choice. A will reading. On Halloween in the basement of an old incineration plant. I mean, come on. I'm afraid so. Classic, Daddy. But it's a fantastic old place though, isn't it? I was completely unaware of the purpose of this building before today. I've driven by at least a thousand times and never knew what it was for. Impressive capability, so I'm told. A moving great incinerator that can handle 15 metric tons of municipal solid waste per hour. 15 tons per hour? Very impressive. Municipal solid waste? Other people's garbage. It can burn 15 tons of garbage in an hour. Didn't you ever pay attention when Daddy spoke about his work? Apparently, the machinery still operates perfectly well, despite the plant being closed for years. Fascinating. Oh, can we get on with this? Uh, yes, good idea. Uh, so let's all sit, shall we? So, do you have a name, lawyer? I do. I'm Sawyer. Sawyer. The lawyer. <laughs> Okay, now I know this is one of Daddy's stupid jokes. Are you even a real lawyer? I didn't choose my name, madam, only the profession. Oh, for God's sake, let him get on with it, Cleo, so we can get the hell out of here. Fine, go ahead. What's in the box? Sawyer, the lawyer. Yeah, what's in the box? Before we get into that, and before this probate process can begin, and before I can inform you of your last fa your late father's wishes, it is important to say that, to the best of my knowledge, this is the latest version of your father's will. As such, the papers I have with me today are legally binding documents. Once you've signed everything, that is. Goodness, you two really are like peas in a pod, aren't you? Yeah, that tends to happen with identical twins. Can we please get on with it? Of course. Right, so, without further delay, I've been instructed to give you these two keys. There are two separate locks on the front of the lockbox in front of you. Please insert the keys and unlock the box at the same time. It won't work unless you do it together at the exact same time. Why am I not surprised? Please do as he asks, ladies. Remember those treasure hunts Daddy used to organize when we were kids? <laughs> yeah. I remember. He'd leave clues all over the house, and in the end, the treasure would be some old junk like that broken doll that one time. Remember that? It had one leg and no eyelashes and a shaved head. God, it gave me nightmares for years. <sighs> I haven't thought about that for ages. I remember our birthday when we were 10. We eat, he got each of us a cardboard box about <laughs> the same size as this lockbox. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And inside the box was another box. And inside that, another box. 
and all the way down into the last teeny tiny box the size of a matchbox. Which was empty. I guess he thought it was funny. What's wrong with the man? Somehow, I don't think this box is empty. Let's just get it over with. On three? Sure. Why not? One. Two. Three. three. Uh, okay. It looks like there are three compartments inside the box. Um, one open and the other two are sealed. It, it looks like we need more keys. God, we are literally going to be here all night with this shit, aren't we? There's a tape recorder. Look, uh, in the open compartment. Yes, please remove the tape recorder and put it on the table before you. Whenever you're ready, just hit play. Here goes. Hello, girls. Oh, my God. Oh my god. Hi, Daddy. Cleo, I don't like this. It's sick. He's, he's dead. I, I, I don't want to listen to his dead voice. It's just a recording, Carrie. Don't freak out. I think you'll find that it is worth your time to listen very carefully, Carrie, to what your father has to say. If you're listening to this, then I'm finally dead. And by now, I should be six feet under the rich, dark, loamy soil of the Mount Pleasant Cemetery. I apologize if I've given you a shock, girls. Darling girls. Daddy will miss you both, you know? This is really weird, Cleo. What's the point of all of this? I'm trying to listen. Now, you're probably both wondering why I brought you here to this place. Well, let me enlighten you. I brought you here because I would like you to play a little game with me. Okay, I'm out. I'm done with this nonsense. C come on, Cleo, let's just get out of here. This, this is a prank, nothing more. This whole thing is just, it's just a sick joke. Sit down, please. Whoa, 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 whoa. Is that a gun? You can clearly see that it's a gun, young lady. And I'm afraid I cannot let you leave. I have been given full permission by your father to use lethal force to keep you here if I have to. What? Don't point that at her. You, you don't have permission to wave a gun at us. What the hell is going on here? As I said, all will be revealed, but I do have to ask you to be patient and to sit down. Screw this. Screw you. <laughs> Son of a bitch! You almost shot me! I, I felt the bullet go right past my ear! I told you to remain calm, and I told you to remain where you are. I must insist that you respect your father's wishes. Next time, I will not miss. Now come back over here, please, and sit down. Are you okay? Why did you run like that? He's got a gun, for God's sake! Are you a complete idiot? Stupid psychopath lawyer nearly shot me. I should kick his stupid stuck-up ass across the- Are you both quite finished? Yes. Yes. A game, you say? What kind of game exactly am I asking you to play? Well, it's a game with high stakes, obviously. I'm dead. And that means an inheritance of some sort, doesn't it? That's why you both agreed to come here, after all. Well, any game has a prize. And in this instance, the prize is the sum total of my entire estate, which I am leaving to you as of today. <laughs> Once you sign the papers, that is. <laughs> and now, you may want to brace yourselves, my little pumpkin pies, because in life, you see, I was a wealthy man. Wait, wait. Is this true? Is he leaving us the whole estate? Nothing to mom? Just listen to the tape. How much? How much is the sick old bastard leaving us? How much? Do I hear you ask? How much do you get? <laughs> Nineteen million dollars. Give or take. <laughs> yes, old Daddy Dearest is leaving you nineteen million dollars. Okay, 
Okay, okay, okay. Uh, stop the tape. Stop the goddamn tape. Will you sit down, please? Is he serious? Daddy burned garbage for a living. How... How could he be worth this much money? Why wait until now to tell us? I haven't been able to pay my rent for two months. And my car... My car broke down six months ago. I've been riding the bus the whole time. Our student debt, Cleo? We could have cleared it like years ago. It's gotta be a joke. This is not a joke. I, I repeat, this is not a joke. Sawyer can provide you with all the evidence, should you doubt my word. A full statement of assets for your perusal, ladies. How do we know this is genuine? Those things can be forged, you know. I can assure you this document isn't a forgery, miss. It is the real deal. Someone is about to become a very rich young lady. Oh my god. I had no idea. Why would he hide this much money from us? Do we... Do we get a 50-50 split? Oh god, yeah. Half each, what's that? A nine and a half million? Nine and a half million dollars. <laughs> <clears throat> I hate to interrupt, but that isn't quite right. But Daddy said... Just listen to the tape, please. Now, before you get too excited, girls, let's listen back to what I said carefully, shall we? I said that I was leaving you $19 million. I didn't say which one of you I was leaving it to, though, did I? <laughs> You get the money if you play the game, as in one of you, not both. Wait, Wait. what? What? Ah. <laughs> you weren't expecting that now, were you? <laughs> I can see your faces now. What a picture. What a treat. <laughs> You can't be serious. We're, we're sisters. We're, we're twins. We should split the money 50-50. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Carrie, something doesn't feel right about this. I feel like he knows something we don't. Who is it? Who's named in the will? Who gets all the money? Who did daddy choose? Tell me! <laughs> now we're beginning to ask the right questions. Now I think it's time to give them the second set of keys, Sawyer. As you wish, sir. Now please open the second compartment in the lockbox, girls. Oh, wait. I mean, I'm not exactly going anywhere, am I? <laughs> I actually thought that once she died, we wouldn't have to put up with your nonsense anymore, you crazy old fart. God. Just... Open the compartment, Carrie. Oh. What is that? It's a pair of black leather go gloves. Oh, no, wait. Two pairs of gloves. Great. And what do these have to do with our money exactly? The patience, girls, all in good time. I need you to put the gloves on, please, darling girls. Sarcasm was never your forte, Daddy. I swear to God, I'm- Just put the goddamn gloves on, Carrie, and shut up, would you? Getting a headache. Well, I'll give you a real headache in a minute. Okay, gloves on? Yes, Daddy. This is completely ridiculous. He's dead, by the way. Sawyer, give them the third set of keys, please, and be quick about it. The hours are ticking by. Right you are, boss. <laughs> I don't know why exactly I'm actually talking to you, given that you're dead and can't hear me, but hey-ho. Now, wait, uh, where did I put them? Uh, I put them here Some Ah, yes, here we are. Now, please, open the third compartment in the lockbox, darling girls. Oh, 
oh god what's that smell god it stinks something isn't right here sis i keep telling you wait there's some kind of packaging like plastic wrapping or something oh my god how what what is it it's a head it's it's a head cleo it's a real human head what don't be ridiculous look let me look in there oh my god oh my god Oh my god, why is that in there? What is this? What's going on? Why are you doing this to us, you sick old freak? Is it... Is it fresh? What difference does it make? No, it's not fresh. It looks... It looks... Preserved, somehow. I'm gonna be sick. It's just so disgusting. It's... It's looking at me. It's looking at me, Cleo. Can we please get out of here? I, I, I want to get out of here right now. I would advise against that, young lady. Uh, Sawyer? Yes? Sawyer, why is there a preserved human head in the box in front of us? And why am I wearing a pair of black leather Boston Strangler gloves? And why am I sitting in a freezing factory late at night, listening to the voice of my dead father? And, and... Yes? Where the hell is my money? Wait. Your money? Daddy said he wanted to play a game, Carrie. So, there has to be a point to this whole rigmarole. I just want to find out what it is before I die of old age myself. Thank you. I don't understand. I just want to go home. Ladies, please. I understand this is all quite upsetting for you. But perhaps the tape can shed some light on this? There's a guy's head in a goddamn cardboard box in the floor in front of us, you son of a bitch! I don't want to listen to this stupid tape anymore! Not even for 19 million dollars. Play the tape. Play the tape. So, by now, you will have discovered my little taxidermy project. <laughs> Surprise! I cannot believe I'm related to you, you horrible dead freak. Impressive what you can do with the right chemicals and a little practice, isn't it? <laughs> it took years to perfect the technique, you know. Years of trial and error. I started when I was a kid, you know. I had a shed in the woods stocked with all the chemicals. I used to pick up roadkill and experiment for hours in there. Ah, uh, the folly of you. Anyway, I expect that you are curious about the identity of the head in the box and what it has to do with you exactly. I don't want to know anymore. Keep the money. I don't want to know. Put a lid on it, Carrie. Listen! Well, my little sweetie pies, I'm afraid Daddy has been keeping secrets from you. In fact, Daddy has been rather naughty. <laughs> the head in the box belongs to a man once known as Lyndon Blackfriar. But that's... that's your name. Confusing, isn't it? Well, let me help you shed some light on the mystery. The head in the box belonged to the real Lyndon Blackfriar. I murdered the real Lyndon Blackfriar when we were both 18 years old. What? what? He was a college buddy of mine, you see, way back when. We were inseparable, actually, until Lyndon came of age and inherited his fortune. Then changed. He got airs and graces, got too good for me. I was a poor kid, you see, blue-collar family. And he, well, suddenly, he was a millionaire. He stopped hanging around with me, got himself some more suitable friends. Crazy what money does to people, you know, how it corrupts the mind. I asked him for a loan once, just a, a few hundred dollars so I could buy a car, get a job. What's a few hundred dollars between friends, after all? Know what he said? He 
He said that life doesn't just give you anything for free. You have to earn it. All his money. And he wouldn't even loan me a measly few hundred bucks. Should I be calling the police right now? Shh. Well, I thought about what he said long and hard. And eventually, I decided to take his advice. Because he was right. Life doesn't give you sweet dick all for free. So... I stole his identity and his money. <laughs> oh, it was easy, really. Lyndon had elderly parents. They had both passed away years earlier. And Lyndon's friends were just sycophantic hangers-on, and they weren't really interested in him as, as a person, only his wealth and fortune. So I murdered him, got rid of the body, and kept his head in a jar in my wardrobe as a token... Of, of affection, I suppose. After all, we had been friends once. Best friends. Then I packed up and moved overseas so that any remaining family members and well-meaning busybodies couldn't find me. When I was old enough, and, and everybody who knew the real Lyndon had died or was reliably senile, well, I came back. And guess what? I got away with it. <laughs> No one suspected a thing. Oh, it's marvelous, isn't it? What a frickin' joke. No one cared about him. No one noticed that he was actually me. <laughs> marvelous. <laughs> anyway, if you're interested, my real name is Jimmy. Jimmy Brown. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Shame I'm dead, too, isn't it? <laughs> So, I'm not Cleo Blackfriar? I'm actually Cleo... Brown? Does it matter? There's a dead dude's head eyeballing us from the table, Cleo! So, then, down to business. <clears throat> what does all this mean for you both? Well, I'm afraid I have some bad news, my darlings. What it means is that the money all... Nineteen million dollars of it, plus the factories and the land attached. <laughs> well, none of it is mine to give. <laughs> Not a single cent. <laughs> Not one measly dollar. <laughs> you ain't eligible for any of it. <laughs> what your father is referring to is something commonly known in this country as the Slayer Rule which states that a murderer cannot inherit from the deceased whom they have killed. So basically all the wealth that your dear departed daddy accumulated doesn't really belong to him. Which means he can't give it to either one of you, not legally. Can't give away what doesn't belong to you, can you now? I don't understand. You said one of us would inherit. Yes, I would advise you to listen to the tape. The tape, yeah. Yeah, you sound like a broken record. Carrie, are you crying? <laughs> so what if I am? This is so messed up! Now, my friend Sawyer here is the only other person living who knows about any of this. I am paying him very handsomely to keep his silence. If he goes to the police, he loses his share of the money, which is separate to your inheritance before you start complaining. And so, he has an incentive to do as I ask. <laughs> Our inheritance? But I thought he said... Sawyer, it's time to start the game. At last. Right, now I need you to listen to me carefully, please, ladies. Cleo, I need you to walk ten paces in that direction, please, miss. Why should I? Nineteen million dollars enough of an incentive? I don't like you very much, do you know that? Walk ten paces that way, please, miss. Fine. And you? What? What do you want? What twisted charade do you want me to perform in now? Just walk ten paces that way in the opposite direction to your sister, please. Mm -hmm. There we are. Perfect. Is that your gun? 
Why did you put it on the floor? What? Oh, do shut up, miss. I've had quite enough of you for one evening. Right, any minute now. Are you ready, girls? Do you remember the games we used to play when you were children, girls? We had so much fun, didn't we? So let's have a little more. Let's play one last game just for me. I don't want to play anymore. Cleo, tell him, please. Shh, Mary. It'll all be over soon, I'm sure. On the floor, exactly ten paces away from either of you, is Sawyer's gun. It's also, by the way, the gun I used to kill the real Lyndon Blackfriar. The gun is loaded and the safety is off. The game is simple, really. It's a race. I'm going to count to three. When I reach the number three, you'll hear a beep. That is your cue to run. I'm going to let one of you inherit my fortune, you see. Just one. Nineteen million dollars. So whomever gets to the gun first and uses it to kill the other one wins the race. And the money. <laughs> no questions asked, no recriminations, no nothing. You can carry on enjoying the spoils of my sins and live long, wealthy, and oh, a healthy life. <laughs> All you have to do is shoot your sister first. Are we clear? What? It's quite simple, really. Wait for the beep, race to the gun, and shoot. Winner wins all the money. Simple. I understand now. I understand why he chose here. This place. This is one of the only derelict plants we own where the incinerator is still fully functioning, isn't it? I remember Daddy said he couldn't bear to strip it for parts. Not yet. Fully functioning incinerator. The perfect place to burn a body. And these gloves. These gloves are so that we don't leave any fingerprints on the gun. No evidence. Cleo? Cleo, what are you saying? Cleo? Ready? I know I am. <laughs> Alrighty then. Here we go. Cleo! Why won't you look at me, Cleo? Cleo! What's going on in your head, Cleo? You know, I never thought you treated Daddy with the respect he deserved, Carrie. Not one bit. One? Always so spoiled. Always so petulant. Daddy tried to give you advice and help you out. But you were always so stubborn. Two? Sure, he's done bad things, but he was also our daddy. Cleo! And you know what? I could really use that money, sis. Hell, I deserve <laughs> that money. I work hard. Harder than you ever have in your lazy ass life. Yeah, that's right. Lazy. <laughs> Lazy and whiny and weak. Cleo! Three! <laughs> Sorry, sis. No! I think it's what Daddy would have wanted, Carrie. Well, now that's all that's finished with, all that remains for me is to hand you these papers for you to sign. Finally. All I ever wanted was what's owed to me, you know? She wasn't... She wasn't deserving of it. Well done, Piglet. Well done. Daddy? Daddy! I th But... But you're dead! You're on the tape recorder! You... You're dead! You're not dead? No, no, my darling girl. I'm not dead. Just pretending. <laughs> I shot Carrie, Daddy. Because I thought you were dead. As I predicted. I knew it would be you, Cleo. I knew what you were before you did. You were like me. I could see it in your eyes, even when you were a baby. 
you would do whatever it took to get ahead. Now, I want you to do just one more thing for me, princess. I want you to shoot the lawyer. Wait, what? Uh, no, 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 you can't. People will notice if I disappear. I, ha I have a wife. Kids, they they'll know that something has... Daddy? Do I... Do I still get the money? Oh, <laughs> there's no money, Pumpernickel. <laughs> there never was. I declared myself bankrupt years ago. I never was much good with my finances. You, you son of a bitch! I'll kill you! <laughs> oh, you're all out of bullets, sweetie. <laughs> That's okay, because I have this knife, you see. No, 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 no. wait, wait! Oh, don't be sad, darling. It's just a game. Just a silly game. Daddy! No! <clears throat> there we go, sweetie. That's right. You lie down now. It's all over. <laughs> well... That was a fun game, wasn't it? I enjoyed myself immensely, I must say. Hmm. Well, well. What do we have here? The head of my old friend, Lyndon Blackfriar. What do you say, Lyndon? Once we've incinerated these bodies and all the evidence, shall we take a stroll? <laughs> What's that you say? Whatever I want? <laughs> yeah, well, yes, Lyndon, how right you are. Whatever Daddy wants. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. Wasn't that fun? Great fun indeed. <laughs> Great job, guys. Brandon, Thank, you, thank Brandon. you so much for being here. Just on the bench, keeping my seat warm. <laughs> yes, thank you, Brandon. Excellent music. I, I try to remember to trigger it every now and then. I was, it sounded great. Everyone's upset I died, by the way, guys. So thanks, Gemma. Wow, everyone loves that I died, I guess. Thanks, Gemma. You have Gemma. such a good death scream, Nicole. It's so good. I couldn't do it because I didn't want to blow out Zoom. Oh, I'm sure I did. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. I'm loud. But we love you. So, Gemma, what motivated you to have all of those deaths? You don't like Jessica, Nicole, or David. That's. <laughs> I think I seem to remember dying in the last thing that I did for Gemma. I just, yeah, I just like to watch people burn, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that is where we went afterwards, right into the incinerator. Yeah. yeah it's so fun. It's no like fun unless everybody dies. Yeah, yes. both Davids died in a. Uh... And the train as well, right? Mm. Whoa, spoilers. Spoilers. Settle down, Brandon. <laughs> you had to be in Europe months ago to, to get that one. <laughs> People were allowed to do things like yeah, train. Yeah, you won't, won't never be able to meet up again anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, lots, of, uh, lots of applause coming in on the, uh, mm -hmm. on the old... Uh, well, I, have to, I think we can hear it. Oh, there it is, yes. Of lots of <laughs> <laughs> Mm, mm, mm. I just love the fact that, that the perspective of my mug is just is is has been commented on a couple of times. I love that it reaching says through, mug of tea. Yeah, reaching Have you through ever the put coffee in it? Big, oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gin. Have you ever put gin in it? Uh, it is quite a big mug. It would be it would be quite fun to have the tea a yes. and the tea. Yes. That's a breakfast gin. That, that's absolutely a breakfast gin. <laughs> what else are you going to do during toast. quarantine? Just oh, fill true. it up. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, that was, uh, that was a lot of fun to do. And uh, thank you for everyone who has joined us on the live stream. Oh, 160 people. So that's oh, a oh, wow, hey. good number. Wonderful. Lots of folks. Yeah. So, uh, Gemma, thank you for joining us all the way from Bristol, England. Now, I see just 
uh, it's strange. Your, your house is so cluttered. You seem to have some books left out on your couch behind you. There. <laughs> oh. yeah. That's strange. What, what would those books be? And if someone was were interested, where where could they find them, Gemma? They, they, they might be some of the books that, that I've written. Um, uh, and they would be available on Amazon if anybody fancied typing my name into Amazon. Yes. Thank oh, you, Jessica. Our, our own Vanna White. That's holding my first one. <laughs> <laughs> and and a lot of the stories in Cruel Wax have been on the No Sleep podcast um, as well. So if and there's to... pictures. Gemma's mm-hmm. an incredible artist. Look at that. Whoa! Spoilers, Jessica. Mm-hmm. Put the book away. <laughs> Brandon, I know you don't read, so you don't know this, but by looking at a page in a book, <laughs> the story just doesn't implant itself in your brain. It eases <laughs> into your scalp. <laughs> I, will, yes. I can say this though the last book i did read in the past i don't know 32 years was dear laura and it was very good good job you got brandon to read i haven't even been able to get That's brandon impressive. to read <laughs> yeah three tours i'm like brandon read and he's like can't literate physically don't can't do how. it <laughs> don't know how learned <laughs> just for you Gemma. that makes me happy <laughs> Well, she gave me a coloring book version of it so I could actually get through the oh story. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> get out of here, Brandon. That story is not for children. Brandon, we all know that you can't color in the lines anyway. <laughs> I make fun of all myself right, and then Jessica all takes right, it a little children. more further, you know? <laughs> I get, do I have to step in here as Daddy D? And let Let's <laughs> never say Daddy again. Whatever Daddy wants. <laughs> oh, Jessica. Daddy. Oh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> now, who who else has anything to plug? If you if you listen to this week's episode of the podcast, or you will shortly, you'll hear a little plug for a show called the Leviathan Chronicles, right, David? Indeed, so yes, the Le- the Leviathan Chronicles was started back in two thousand and eight. It was one of the first really epic uh, full cast audio dramas. Um, and it uh, had the first series and it started the second series and various things have happened in between but now uh, on on Monday so the 11th of May on Monday there is a live stream to finish the uh, the series and you will hear as part of the series some uh, some names that you will recognize uh, of the likes of Nicole Goodnight um, and Erica Sanderson, Graham Rowett um, Dan Zapula, Ellie Hirschman, and me. Uh, but it's really well worth um, having a listen through to the Leviathan Chronicles. There's hours and hours and hours of excellent audio to catch up on to get you ready for uh, the release of the ending of that se- series and the ending of the entire story. Wonderful. Excellent. LeviathanChronicles.com. Check that out. Indeed. And, and I see we're all bringing out our pets now. We've got a cat and a hedgehog. <laughs> yeah, my cats probably don't want to be in here right now. And Gemma's bottle of something gin, undoubtedly. <laughs> <laughs> and Brandon's got all his pets surrounding him there. Yeah, they're just plugged into the wall, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Well, I think that may uh, that may just about do it, unless anyone else has anything to plug or to uh, bring to anyone's attention. We'll go around and say one last final farewell and goodbye to the audience. Brandon, what do you have to say? Um, thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll see you again soon. More live streams as always. And uh, hope everyone's staying safe and, you know, just watching us, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all you really should be doing t- during this time. Just replay it. <laughs> I, I, I do sell a live stream from your, uh, from your house. Just to select clients, Brandon. Oh, that's yes. that check I get in the mail every month. Yeah, that makes exactly. Sense well, now. okay. That, that's your part of it. <laughs> and David, what about you? Uh, yep. Yeah, just um, keep enjoying yourselves, support the arts, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and uh, drink tea. Wise words. Wise words. Nicole and your hedgehog. I'm my hedgehog. Who? Someone asked what her name is. Her name is Katamari. Um, thank you guys so for perfect. coming. I love her so much. Um, thank you all for coming. It's again, I, I know I say this all the time, but it, it really is truly because of our fans and people like you that that we're able to keep doing this. And it's it's just truly a dream to be able to perform, you know, what we love to do for people who enjoy it. And it, it means 
more to me than I can ever say. So thank you guys so much for coming out. It, it really, truly just means the world to me. Lovely, lovely. Jessica, any last words? <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, take care of yourselves out there. It's okay to not feel okay right now. So take breaks when you need it. Do things you love with people you love to the degree you can. And wash your damn hands. <laughs> <laughs> so aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> and Gemma, what would you like to say? I would like to say thank you to my wonderful No Sleep family who keep me going on dark, dreary days. And um, please do wash your hands, <laughs> sing a song while you're doing it, and uh, stay safe. And thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us and for your script. Wonderful to uh, perform. Yes, so thanks everybody to uh, for, for being here and as Gemma said, sing a song. So stay safe, oh yeah. Wash your hands and stay healthy. <laughs> we go. all gonna sing Imagine now. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, I should have sung Imagine. I, everyone oh, loves when people sing Imagine. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thanks for joining us folks. And yes, uh, more live streams coming next week. And uh, stay safe, stay healthy, stay sane, and stay sleepless. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.